I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and you thought the new iPad was the iPad 2. We'll move aside because the new new iPad is in the office. We're going to take a look at the unboxing of the new iPad, also known as the Apple iPad 3. But before we do that, some love to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with tablets, phones, and more for use in our One Paul Bandit game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, they'll help you walk out working. You'll set up your email, your web, your browsing experience your music and more so when you walk out that door you're good to go at Best Buy Mobile with your new iPad or iPad 3 as we're all kind of really calling it behind the scenes. Let's take a look at it now. Unboxing new iPad. Is this all it can be or does Apple have some stuff to put in the next one? We'll find out starting right now. Here it is. A lot of people have been waiting for it. Don't call it the iPad 3 though. Apple's calling it the new iPad. And I get where they're going with that scheme. You know, they say the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, all the MacBook products never really had different names or you know, any sort of numbering scheme outside of their various names over the years. But it's kind of interesting to go from iPad to iPad 2 and then back to iPad. It seems kind of odd. I feel bad for people that are going to sell theirs on eBay in a couple months. It's like the new, new iPad. But anyway, here it is. iPad. 16 gigabytes, the model that I got uh, for review purposes. I bought this myself. This actually did not come from, uh, from Apple or PR or anybody like that. But this particular model is a 16 gigabyte model. It's the Wi-Fi only model. And like the old iPads, they start at uh, $499.99. You can get a 16, 32, or 64 gigabyte version. And you can get those in either Wi-Fi or Wi-Fi plus cellular capabilities. Now the improvements to the new iPad over the iPad 2, a couple of things. First of all, you get one with cellular radio. It has 4G LTE connectivity on AT&T and on Verizon. So you can take advantage of that fast 4G LTE speeds. And you can see in the box, comes with an iPad, a dock connector to USB cable, 10 watt power adapter, and supports Wi-Fi 802.11, A, B, G, and N, and Bluetooth 4.0. Then of course this is the uh, the white model. So like I said, starts at 499, and then with Wi-Fi it's 499, 599, 699, and then for Wi-Fi plus cellular it's 629, 729. 829. Now there's some improved specs over here. It still has the same 9.7 inch display, but it's sporting a retina display. So same as the iPhone. There it is. Beautiful white iPad. We're going to call it the iPad 3 just for purposes of this. The iPad 3 or the new iPad with your uh, FaceTime camera on the front. Here's another spec bump as well. 5 megapixel eyesight. So interestingly enough, a couple of things. First of all, they went back to calling it an eyesight camera, but it's a 5 megapixel shooter on the back that takes uh, HD video as well. So I've got my little adapter here. Little baby adapter. It's a baby. And then you got Apple in California here, designed by Apple in California. Typical manuals, I'm assuming. Yeah, a little stuff in there. I'll read manuals. Tech people don't read manuals. They just get lost and then complain about it on Twitter. And then you have the USB cable over here, which plugs into the AC adapter module and uh, gives you the power that you need. So take a look here. It's a little bit heavier. You don't really notice it, or at least I don't notice it comparing this to the older iPad. Listen, that plastic coming off. Ooh, ooh, that's nice. And then, of course, like I said, 5 megapixel camera, retina display on this bad voice. So that's an improvement. 2048 by 1536 pixels, if I can recall. So if you like that retina display on your iPhone 4 or 4S, you're going to love the retina display on the, uh, the Apple iPad 3. I'm sorry, the new iPad. So white version here. Same things over on the sides. Volume rocker. You've got your uh, switch here to toggle between mute and uh, being on full volume. Power button up at the top. And then your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So riddle me this, if it has a five megapixel camera, do people, you know, I just find it funny when people hold up an iPad like that just to uh, take pictures or shoot video. But hey, you can do it. That's what matters. So iPad's here. Let's load this up and get into Wi-Fi. Let me find a good Wi-Fi signal. So we got through the Wi-Fi setup and you can see terms and conditions. And this obviously isn't going to show as well on the camera as I'd like it to, but you can really see that retina display is absolutely beautiful in comparison to the old iPad. Gone, much like when we went from the 3GS and the iPhone side to the 4, gone is the pixelation and it's been replaced by a uh, beautiful display. So let's get in here and take a look at some pictures. Yeah, we're going to use that, dictation, and then we're going to not send the diagnostics and we're going to start using the iPad right now. But I mean, you can absolutely see gorgeous display here, particularly when you see the colors in the background. So let's go into some of the wallpapers here and take a look and see if we can get a better idea as to, let's do that. And you can really just see some of these uh, wallpapers that have been on the iPad and the iPhone for some time. You can really see the texture in these. For example, you can see the little texture in the rock. So it is a beautiful display. I'll give them, uh, I'll give them that. So just gorgeous improvement. And so it's going to be great for reading text or, you know, whether you do email on your device or you read a lot of text, you read New York Times, read any sort of the, uh, the popular uh, periodicals. On your uh, on your iPad, you're going to notice that. And let's go to um, let's just do, 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 do let's take a look at messages, for example. And you have iMessage in here, and of course, you're going to need your Apple ID to activate iMessage. But it does have that functionality for iMessage, and of course, FaceTime as well. So along with the iPod Touch, the iPhone, and now uh, Mac computers, you can take advantage of FaceTime capabilities on this bad boy as well. But in terms of functionality of iOS, not a whole lot's changed here. You can see same 9.7 inch display. So size wise. It's still uh, pretty similar, and one thing I like, you know, I think 9.7 is borderline for a lot of people because if you're holding this in portrait mode, you can see my fingers touch, and that's about as big as you can get 
with the, uh, the portrait keyboard. Of course, you can use it in landscape mode as well. If you're in an application that supports it, you get a nice large keyboard as well, and you can buy the, uh, the additional cases at the Apple Store for $69, if I remember right. It allows you to kind of prop it up and use it a little bit more uh, like an actual tablet. So let's take a look at the browser here. Let's go into Safari and load up, of course, our favorite website, phonedog.com. You can see same stuff here, notifications at the top, iPad, Wi-Fi connected, and then, of course, if you have a cellular version, you're gonna see the, uh, the 4G LTE logo if you're in a market that supports 4G LTE. So let's go to phonedog.com, load that up and take a look right now. So let's do some pinch to zoom, and you can really see, again, I don't know if the camera's doing it justice, but beautiful retina display, even zooming all the way in on this text. I mean, it just looks gorgeous in comparison to the, uh, the iPad 2. And again, I think for a lot of people that are coming perhaps or came in the past from the past, uh, came in the past, excuse me, from 3GS to 4, you'll really notice that difference between a non-retina display and a, uh, and a retina display. So they've done a really good job with that. What else can we take a look at? Let's see, take a look at the calendar as well, just to give you a run through here and see how it looks uh, on the device as well. So all in all, a nice improvement again, but it's an evolutionary update for the iPad, much like the iPhone 4S was for the iPhone 4. So I think a lot of people were disappointed in the fact that it wasn't a huge design change. And then outside of some of the specs, quad-core graphics, 9.7-inch retina display, five megapixel camera, as opposed to uh, the past in the iPad 2. There were some nice upgrades, but they're still relatively minor in comparison to you know what people thought they should have done. So unfortunately, that's the uh, state of the industry we're in now, where we see these rumors and leaks that sound great, and then you look at the actual product, and you're like, well, it's actually you know more revolutionary than, uh, or evolutionary, rather, than revolutionary, but still a nice device starting at the same price point and gonna compete with all of those Android tablets on the market. Much more coverage to come on the Apple iPad 3, also known as the new iPad on phonedog.com. Keep it locked on the site for continuing coverage. Be sure to follow us on Facebook as well, facebook.com slash phonedog. Head over there, like us, let us know what you think of the, uh, the new iPad. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as well, phonedog underscore Aaron, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phonedogab. I'm off to play with my new iPad, the new iPad and see what it can do. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.